who wants to be the goody two shoes Mario when you can play as the bad guy Wario in Wario Land? It's Super Mario Land 3 from 1993 on the original Game Boy, being played here using the Game Boy Advance SP, one of the best old school Game Boy games that I've ever played. And even though I'm not a huge platforming fan, what I like about Wario Land is the slight departure from the happy-go-lucky Mario style. Everything in Wario Land is a bit darker than the average Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Land game. The music is all slightly off-key and, and somewhat eerie, and Wario always has that up-to-no-good look on his face. I like that. Old school Mario fans could probably write a book about the brilliance in this game and some of the other Mario classics. What I like about Wario Land is how solid and well made it is. Unlike the original Super Mario Land, Wario Land fills the Game Boy screen perfectly. As you conquer a variety of levels in different environments in order to collect coins to buy a giant mansion. After you complete each level, you can play one of two mini-games to try to either increase your wealth or earn extra lives. If you lose, the game strips you of half your wealth, but you can continue from the level at which you died. Here's the first mini-game, which is basically like gambling. Do I get more money or does the game punish me for taking a chance? So even if you die in a level while playing through the game, you can always play that level over and over again without having to start at the beginning again. You just won't have as many coins by the time you finish. Wario Land is infinitely playable because there's a lot of great levels to memorize and master, as well as a number of hidden objects to find. And you don't always have to start at the first level and play your way through each time. You can jump to any level you want and play it over and over again. Eventually you'll want to challenge yourself by taking a trip through the entire game in one go. The end bosses early in the game are extremely easy, but they become tricky, like this one, which took me about 30 tries to beat. Note that Wario wears different hats throughout Wario Land. The spiked Viking hat is particularly useful, but he's also got a flamethrower hat. Let's take a chance on the C course here to try and earn some extra hearts. 100 hearts will give you an extra Wario. Wario Land plays extremely well on the Game Boy, or at least it does on the Game Boy Advance SP, as you can see. He can jump and attack like the normal Super Mario Bros. games, but he can also do a dash attack. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that different from the other Mario Bros. games, except this one is perfectly suited for the Game Boy. However, who doesn't like playing as the bad guy? It's awesome! See, the problem with Mario is he's too good to be true. He's always out doing good, he's saving princesses, he's smiling, he's skilled at every sport, and he's even befriended Sonic the Hedgehog, whereas Wario is flawed. He's kind of evil, but not really. I think that what's most important is that Wario isn't looking out for anybody other than himself, and that's something we can all relate to. So, so when you're playing this game, it's, it's infinitely more relaxing. You don't have to worry about some princess trapped in a dungeon possibly dying of dehydration if you don't get there in time. All that you've really got to worry about in this game is mastering levels and putting cash into Wario's pocket. And because of that, Wario Land is less stressful than Mario Land. There's so much to like about this game. Terrific level design, excellent gameplay, wonderful music, and it's easy to find and cheap. It's gameplay and a bad attitude that rock the universe with Wario Land. Highly, highly recommended for fans of any Mario Brothers games, platformers, or those building a Game Boy collection. Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 
and I will be covering Super Mario Land 1 and 2 as well. But I like the evil side of Wario. <laughs>